Today we come together once more to thank God for the gift of our vocation and that of the Eucharist that he entrusted to us. It is an opportunity for us, individually and collectively, to reflect on who we are, particularly on our journey to holiness. True, we have our crosses to bear in this life, and we are not, we are not the only ones. But the gifts we have received are so great that we cannot fail to sing today from the depths of our hearts our own magnificat. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bring liberty to captives and recover of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year acceptable to the Lord. It is in that anointing that we too are established in our priesthood. So we should feel encouraged in that we are not alone in our work of service, but we have the same spirit who gave strength to our Lord in his own mission. One important aspect of our priesthood, as it was for Jesus, is to share in the different life experiences of God's people. Their sufferings and joys, their dis disappointments and hopes. In the words of Vatican II, the joys and hopes, the griefs and anxieties of men of this age, especially those who are poor, or in any way afflicted. These are the joys and hopes, the griefs and anxieties, anxieties of the followers of Christ. That applies in a unique way to our priestly ministry. Looking at the socio-economic and the political situation in our country at the moment, I think we have a reason to be concerned as shepherds of God's people. But if we really want to be of help in these human situations that are often complex, my dear brothers, let us maintain our proper character and be truly faithful to our vocation. So far, the new dispensation does not seem to have brought about much needed transformation that our country urgently needs. Of particular concern for us this year is the plight of our young people, their future. Without any prospects of jobs, they, are, they become vulnerable to manipulation by the rich and the powerful. It is my sincere hope that the theme of the forthcoming synod dedicated to the youth and that of our pastoral plan will inspire all of us priests to form our youth in virtue, not the violence, to help them contribute positively to cohesion in our society and in our church. It is an opportunity for us too to promote vocations to the priesthood in our respective parishes. There is no doubt that Christ continues to call young people to be his friends. <clears throat> and some of them to give themselves completely for the sake of the kingdom. Believe me, vocations will certainly not be lacking if the, our men of life is truly priestly. If we become more holy, more joyful and impassioned in the exercise of our ministry. They say a priest won by Christ more easily wins others so that they too decide to set out on the same adventure. If we are to trace 
the path that brought us to the priesthood. I'm sure a good number of us would recall coming across such a priest in, in, in our lives who inspired us by the way he lived his priestly life. And to you, our young people, I wish to share with you the following advice from Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. Dear young people, enticements of all kinds may tempt you. Ideologies, sex, money, drugs, casual sex, violence, you name it. Be vigilant. Those who propose these things to you want to destroy your future. In spite of the difficulties, do not be discouraged. And do not give up your ideals. Place Jesus at the center of your lives through prayer, but also through study of scripture. Frequent recourse to sacraments, <coughs> formation in the church social teaching, and your active part and enthusiastic participation in ecclesial groups and movements. Cultivate a yearning for fraternity, justice, and peace. That is what Pope Benedict, the Emeritus now, advises you young people. As young people, you are, of course, vibrant and full of life. But don't forget you lack experience. In your discernment, in your discernment, turn to your priests, turn to your parents, turn to your teachers and other experienced people for guidance. And with the general elections coming up this year, I say to you, don't disappoint us by your behavior. <laughs> and my dear brother priest, Today we also renew our promise of, of obedience that we made on the day of our ordination to the priesthood. Let our promise be illuminated by our relationship with the Eucharist. Obedience is a sign of love. So is the Eucharist. It is a sign of love. It means that we want what God wants. We reject what God rejects and are ready to do anything to save him as he makes his will known to us. And to all of us, my brothers and sisters, let us realize the centrality of the Eucharist in our Christian life. The church has received the Eucharist from Christ, her Lord, not as one gift, however precious, among so many gifts but as the gift for excellence. For it is a gift of himself to us. It is therefore important that we celebrate it with utmost reverence. Mm -hmm. While there, I wish to make two comments in this regard. I fully acknowledge, Amazadiwa, that our economic situation <coughs> has forced the many of us to be innovative just to make sure we are able to put food on the table. It's not surprising, therefore, that vending has become a popular means of survival. In fact, it has become a culture. We see that not only in the streets out there, but we now we see it also at the doorsteps of our churches as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist. Some of us come to our celebrations not to take part in the sacraments, but to sell their wares. If they come up at all, it is to receive Holy Communion at the end, in a celebration they were not part of. They would neither have participated in the Temple of the Word of God, nor in the temple of the Eucharist itself. Even in our parishes, Eucharistic celebrations have become popular occasions for fundraising. 
what does that say about us as far as our understanding of the gift of the Eucharist is concerned? What's that? What does it say about us? <laughs> Times are hard, yes. But can we not draw the line somewhere? Can we not draw the line somewhere? That's the first comment I would like to make. Secondly, I would like to share with you a recent reflection by Pope Francis dedicated to the Eucharist. He starts by emphasizing the fact that the Eucharist is the heart of the church and the source of her life. Therefore, Mass is important for the life of every Christian community. He then reminds us of the many Christians who have died defending the Eucharist. And all those even today who must risk their lives in order to participate in Sunday Mass. You just have to listen and hear the stories about what's happening in Egypt, what's happening in Pakistan, what's happening in Afghanistan, what's happening in Syria, Iraq, how Christians have to risk their lives to go and attend Mass. And Pope, Pope Francis gives us an example of the North African Christians in the fourth century who when asked why they celebrated Mass, they celebrated Mass knowing too well that the authorities had forbidden it, gave the following reply. Without Sunday, we cannot live. Without Sunday, we cannot live. Kunemiamatsedu Kunoti Finally, my dear brother priest, we call to mind the ways of our Lord to his disciples. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. On this day when we celebrate the birth of our priesthood, let us make this our wish for one another. Let this be the wish we have for one another. That we go and bear fruit like the apostles. And that our fruit may abide. Let us pray for one another, especially at the table of the Eucharist. I am the way of Christ.